Honda has given the performance division line for the exterior styling for the new 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE. This is the HPD and the Sonic Gray Pearl here at Regal Honda. Updates the exterior and the interior with standard all wheel drive. The styling upgrades are going to include the bronze package, flared fenders, 18 inch HPD alloy wheels, grill update. And in the interior, you're still getting the standard amenities, touchscreen navigation, room for five, Honda's one size fit all going after the Nissan Frontier, your Hyundai Santa Cruz, Chevy Colorado, the list goes on and on, but a vehicle that's athletic, a unibot drive, very easy in the sense it's like a car, and yet it's a truck towing up to 5,000 pounds. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rods, and I'm gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. The new Honda Ridgeline HPD package with this Sonic Gray Pearl really sets a good appearance and it definitely gives a different styling choose. Grill is darkened out. You're gonna have the chrome that's going to go right into your LED headlamp assembly and daytime runnings. The fog lamp assembly right underneath here. Functional side curtains, HPD 18 inch, multi-spoke alloy wheels. The flared fenders that go into the side skirts. HPD badging on the rear, right before your LED tail lights. And the new dual exhaust outlets to finish it that was implemented for 2021. Towing up to 5,000 pounds because this is all wheel drive. It is wide than the Nissan Frontier, so it's gonna look a little bit more aggressive as well. It's going to be taller than the Nissan Frontier, the gloss black on the lower trim, so that way you have that styling that gives an off-road performance look, even though the HPD package doesn't add anything but aesthetics to the exterior. The same weight distribution at 57.1 to 42.9, Behind those wheels is going to house 12.6 inches in the front of a disc reading, 13 in the rear, brake actuated, a limited slip differential, unibody construction, McPherson strut front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension, both the front and the rear, will have your coil springs and your anti-roll bars. Intelligent traction management, intelligent variable torque management, all wheel drive, so that way you can do some maneuvers. It's not a full blown off-roading vehicle, but the HPD package definitely gives the element to the off-roading look. The length is right at the same as the Frontier at 210.2 inches at a wheelbase at 125.2 inches. We get some chrome around the window aesthetics and we get some gloss. And with this paint contrast, I think it really does make that HPD stand out a little bit more. The minivan powertrain still packs enough performance, which you're gonna see in a second when we do the RIV, going inside to your dual action tailgate. The cargo box length is at 64 inches. The width at 60 inches. I uh, hate the 16.7 inches. Between the wheel well housing at 50 inches. You can fit a four by eight foot sheet of plywood flat in the bed of this vehicle. The dual action tailgate, open it up this way, and then you have a car-like trunk underneath it with your spare tire that adds an additional 7.3 cubic feet of cargo, which is unlike any of the rivals, unless you're talking about the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Let's go inside this bag bad boy so we can hear that exhaust note. As you heard from that exhaust note, it definitely gives a throaty sound to it, comparing it to the Frontier, less horsepower and torque. The same thing with the Hyundai Santa Cruz because they have a couple power options with that. And it's not gonna be the off-roader like a Toyota Tacoma, even though you have the HPD package, 
more of an aesthetics, but it definitely looks great when it's backing the performance with the 3.5 liter V6, producing 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. That's paired to a nine-speed shift-by-wire automatic transmission, achieving 18 to 24 MPGs. That's good for a zero to 60 around 6.2 seconds with a quarter mile, 15 seconds flat top speed, 111 miles per hour. So you have the speed, on the road, you have light maneuverability for off-roading, you have towing, and you have cargo beyond most of its competition. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE HPD package as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test. Entering inside the Honda Ridgeline HPD RTLE, headroom at 39.5 inches, legs at 40.9 inches. The HPD package doesn't do anything in the interior. So that is also kind of something that I dislike, but we'll get to that in the drive. You're going to have 10-way power adjustment seats for the driver. These are heated front seats, four-way power adjustment for the passenger. You got the perforated, you got the contrast stitching in white. And you know, it does a good job in the sense that everything matches. I just wish I would have seen some of the flare from the exterior to the interior, because the dashboard, you're getting pretty much the same exact setup as your Honda Pilot, your Honda Passport, and your Honda Odyssey. So when you're comparing these, it's really a one size fit all. So I do like that Honda does that. So if you want to kind of change your vehicle in the sense of going from a van to a truck to an SUV, you can do so and you pretty much know the schematic. I do like that we got the gloss black that's going to be around the center air vents. Unfortunately, on the sides, it's going to be a matte black. The touchscreen is an eight inch. It does have a navigation, which is a plus, And it does have the pinch with the swipe. Click onto the home button and you're going to see all the apps in which we have. We have the Honda Link, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, HD Radio, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio with a volume knob, which is something that Honda really stresses. It's pretty important to buyers in the Honda line. A truck bed audio, which is cool when you're doing camping or anything like that. Switch it to reverse. You're gonna have full trajectory for the reverse camera and the lines do expand. You can change the camera options to make it easier for your reversing and line it up with the tow. So the setup is pretty easy for a day in and day out use. Steering wheel, it's going to be leather wrap. The gray inserts that match it with the silver in the center, it's going to be a little bit big with the paddle shifters and the gauge cluster does have a digital readout more or less. You can go through an array of information for the driver. So it does make it easy for you to understand anything that you need to operate the vehicle and to make sure your services are up to par. Three zone climate control is set with this, just you have to do everything in the front. Storage tier underneath it, wireless charger, 12 volt, USB port, cup holders, 16.9 ounce fits without any issues, and a 42 ounce will fit. Push by wire transmission. I do like that it has this metallic look here. Elbows are gonna be nice and soft because these are pretty much like captain seats. Slide this tray open and you got a deep storage that can fit a tablet, 12 volt USB. You got a little tray you could slide around. And what I like about it is if you are using this for a work truck, you can easily write any information right here or the door panels. Harder materials are going to be on the top memory for the driver. You're going to get an aluminum look. One touch up and down for the front windows. It's going to be relatively soft for your elbows or your armrest. Two tiers of storage so you can fit a lot inside. And that's what I do like about the Ridgeline when we're looking at comparison. You can fit a lot in the front and even in the back, which you're about to see. You got a moonroof. Let's see how it looks. For the back seats, I'm at 38.8 inches of headroom, 36.7 inches of legroom, which is one of the best in class for legroom. So something to really think about whenever you're doing your truck shopping. Two air vents, a storage tier, two USB ports, storage behind both of the front seats. The rear bench does split fold at a 60-40 split, and it is a flat floor more or less with a little tray in between it. So you can even adjust and put things underneath this while you're going on a long journey. So yet again, storage capacity, you're gonna get the most in this line. Cup holders, you can see a 20 ounce is gonna fit. An area that you could put your Bluetooth, it's just a little storage box. As for the door panel, harder materials, one cup holder in an area, maybe for a larger phone, one touch down. No storage on the lower tier, but it wouldn't make sense anyways, because look how hard it would be to get in there. It's better that I could put something underneath me than on the side of the door panel because I have more storage. 
Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center, headroom is still no issue, nor is legroom. Obviously, I'm going to be sharing feet, butt, shoulder space, but it isn't really that bad. It's not necessarily as wide as the numbers project. However, it still has the capacity to fit three adults my dimensions for a midsize truck. Looking for a midsize pickup truck. This definitely does tick a lot of the boxes because storage you have it, capacity to fit five adults you have it, navigation you have it. Let's see how the drive is. Taking the 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE HPD package out. As you're seeing, when you do a little bit of light off-roading, you can kind of do it. There's nothing really to this. I'm just driving over grass. As for the way you sit, it's over 7.6 inches of ground cleared. So you have the capacity to do some things. It's all wheel drive and it's an intelligent system too. So it does definitely help with that. So you can conquer some of those off-roading capabilities. It is the same powertrain as the Honda Odyssey, as the Honda Passport and the Pilot. That's the only disadvantage because when you get the HPD package, that's Honda Performance Division, and they don't really do anything other than aesthetics. As for the width of the vehicle, it does feel very wide. The steering wheel does have some weight to it. So I do like some of those attributes because it actually feels like a mid-sized pickup truck instead of something that feels like a luxury vehicle and there's too much sport to it. This doesn't have that. It actually has a truck feel, but a ride like a car. And check this out. With a nice exhaust note, Plus it's still quiet inside the cabin. So sealing everything up and doing 18 inch wheels for the upgrade, I think that was actually a great choice. V6 with 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque, nine speed shift by wire automatic transmission. And here we go. It's just a smooth ride overall. Something that definitely you can take out and use as a practical car. Or if you need to do some work with it, you have the capability because you have a decent payload, you got a decent towing capabilities. It's obviously not gonna be the best in class. For something you're gonna use long-term, I don't think you're going to be disappointed because you have all the latest technology inside the vehicle. Now, if I was the one purchasing the vehicle and comparing it to a Nissan or a Hyundai, a Toyota, a Chevrolet, there's a lot in this segment. I would really look at your features and I would see which is the best for ground clearance and full capabilities for a long journey. And this one does tick all those boxes because you're not going to be stressed out or wore out when you go on a long journey because the seats are comfortable. So you do have that turn radius at more or less a stop point, about two and a part lane, give it some go. And you can see for maneuverability, you can do so. It's not the biggest truck on the road, 210 inches roughly. It's right at the same as the Nissan Frontier. It's not going to be as tall as it, but both two of them are gonna be a smooth ride. The three things that really make me choose this first would be the car-like ride because I'm somebody that travels quite a bit. I typically go 45 minutes or more in a vehicle every direction, if not even longer. You can do that with this vehicle and it is ultra comfortable. The second thing that I like is the HPD package because the outside aesthetics that it adds is something very unique, especially with this color combo because it really just sets it apart. There is a disadvantage. The last thing that I like is the cargo capacity in the interior because it's so functional in the sense that I could use this as a work truck. I could use this as a daily truck for my family. I don't have to worry about people's size or dimensions. Everyone can pretty much fit inside the Ridgeline. Three things that I dislike about the vehicle has to start off with the HPD package not doing anything for the interior, not doing nothing for the suspension. It is all aesthetics. I do like the aesthetics that we're working with. It just would be nice that I get some performance because we're about $3,000 give or take to get that feature. And yes, it's 
worth it for the sense of you get the wheels, you get the flared fenders, you get the HPD badging. It just would be nice to get some off-roading kit and to have something in the interior. The second thing that I dislike about the vehicle is the tech in it is getting a little bit old and they just did a full refresh in 2021. So I would have liked to see a full digital gauge reader, maybe a little bit larger screen. I do like that we don't have to option or pay a monthly fee navigation, heated seats, anything like that, because I don't see that possible in this particular one, but going forward, who knows? I mean, I'm sure they could retrofit anything nowadays. The last thing that I dislike has to go with the aesthetics in the interior because they're so similar to the minivan, to the SUV, if you're in the same brand, meaning you're transferring from the Odyssey to the Passport or to the Pilot or you're upgrading to the Ridgeline, it's not a big deal because you're going to get used to it. And not just that, but most people like having the same interior specs. And you don't really get any upgrades in performance. They only have one option. You don't get any upgrades for off-roading capabilities. My final thoughts of the Ridgeline RTLE with the HPD package. Well, the first thing that I always like to do is give it a little bit of gas and you have to do that stopping in the middle of the road. So that way you really show how crazy you are. Here we go. definitely a family car a working vehicle too so if you have a business that you're doing anything that's not too over the top you can do that with the Ridgeline which makes this aggressive in the sense of you not necessarily going to a larger truck to stay in the mid-side segment